Hello everyone, Jennifer Maker here. Today we are going to unbox, set up, and play test the new HTV Rant Auto Tumbler heat press. This is an automated cylindrical heat press that claims to work with a variety of tumblers, mugs, and cups made from stainless steel, ceramic, and glass. This auto tumbler press reminds me of the Cricut mug press, but with a much longer chamber. Uh, so you can see that right here, right? It's longer so that you can press a broader range of things. You can go up to nine inches long and from 2.9 inches in diameter to just about 3.35 inches in diameter and from 10 ounces to 30 ounces of your tumblers, mugs, whatever. Of course, you know, it's not like you just go super big or super skinny. There's still a range there, but the range of things that you could do is 10 ounces to 30 ounces. Unlike the Cricut Mug Press, however, it does not automatically calculate the temperature and time for you, which the Mug Press does, and it's super cool. So it's not as automated as the Cricut Mug Press, but it does claim to be able to apply the right amount of pressure based on the diameter of your project. So let's unbox this to see how easy it is to set up and then play test it with some tumblers, mugs, and glass cans. And I have not used this before. Also, as always, I buy all of my own stuff. This was, this is not a sponsored review. I don't do those. No one sent this to me for free. I believe they offered. So inside our box here, we have a product manual, very slim product manual. I'm hoping that it's because it's very easy. Like basically it's four sheets. Okay, there's the manual. Um, some amber colored heat resistant tape. I don't usually use that stuff because I don't always know if it's gonna work. A pair of heat resistant gloves. This is awesome, we need these. And our auto tumbler press itself. Pull this out. There we go. I got this Tumblr Press on Amazon. If you would like to get one, I have a whole bunch of, um, they come in different colors. Um, and I'm going to link the shopping list below. It's at jennifermaker.com slash auto tumbler press. And they have them in white and they have them in this pretty blue color. And then they also have some bundles. Because bundles are nice. I rarely get them. Um, just because I have so much stuff at this point. But if you need them for getting started, they're really good. All right, so this is what it looks like, which is, um, now we don't ever buy tools because they're cute, right? <laughs> That's not our deciding factor. However, this is definitely cute, right? It, it certainly reminds me of the Cricut Mug Press. Right, it's got, now we, we, you can clearly see that it's supposed to be on its base here, but it looks a lot like it. And it's plastic, not, a, not metal. I like that. And also not very big. Uh, I think that this is about 13 by 12, I'd say, and about six inches tall. So definitely not very big. That's really nice too. It doesn't weigh too much. I think it's about nine and a half pounds. I looked it up. I'm not just guessing. I'm not a human scale. <laughs> I also looked up its range for temperature and the range is 210 degrees Fahrenheit to 410 degrees Fahrenheit. That's really important. We need it to go at least to 400 for a good sublimation transfer, which of course is what we use a tumbler press for. And then its time range is from one second to 600 seconds. We don't usually need 600 seconds, but if you're doing a ceramic, ceramic does take longer. So this makes sense. Okay, um, this was really easy to unbox. <laughs> let's, let's still check on the manual to see if there's anything that we're missing. So it gives us, it identifies everything for us. Uh, the heat plate, which is inside here. The LED screen. So there's a screen here that presumably tells us our time and temperature. The buttons are here. Um, there's the heat resistant gloves that they gave us that came in the box and this user manual. So nice and simple. 
Um, okay, and then it gives uh, explains what each of the buttons do, so we'll probably need that. And then there are usage notes. Please ensure the Tumblr has a sublimation coding, right? We don't sublimate onto things that don't have a coding or they won't work. Please ensure the Tumblr is clean without any liquid oil or dust. And then use tumblers the appropriate diameter and lengths, of course. And then here's a little quick start guide. Okay, so nice and easy. So we're going to test this out. I get out the gloves. I love that they gave me gloves. Now I have a lot of gloves at this point, but if you're getting a tumbler for the first, or a tumbler press, or really any heat press for the first time, you should definitely have gloves because when you take it out, it's going to be hot and you don't want to burn yourself. We could also use a cooling rack. I'm going to ask Greg if he'd mind looking to see if he can find our cooling rack. Thank you. Um, if you don't have a cooling rack, you could use like your easy press mat or something. You just need a place to set things on so they don't hurt your surface. Okay, so we have our HTV Rant heat press. Here's what it looks like. This is again the tumbler press. And I'm going to get it plugged in. And then we're going to test it. See how it does. I also want to compare it size-wise at least uh, to other things that we would use for tumblers because we did our sublimation ovens a couple weeks ago and there were lots of questions about why would you use a tumbler press instead of an oven. So one of the reasons is size. Okay, so let's actually, while this is, um, it's not even, it is turned on. Uh, let's, I'm going to get them out so you can see what they look like. So HTV Rant Auto Tumbler Press here. The PYD Life Tumbler Press, certainly bigger, heavier. And the mini sublimation oven also from PYD Life so that you can see the three, there's, there are certainly more ways to do tumblers. At mugs, you could use a um, air fryer. That's just for sublimation, right? Not your home air fryer. So, and that's more about this size, right? So but there's the three sizes, which I really, which is, I think this is useful to see. Elizabeth says, do you have to rotate the tumblers in any of them? Yes, you should rotate the tumblers in them. Well, I don't know. I don't think we have to here, but I'm not sure yet. We're going to find out together. But normally you would rotate your tumblers. I will admit I don't always do it, but you, you really have to do it with this one because it doesn't really close all the way. Um, you don't necessarily have to do it with this one, but I recommend you do. I just don't always do it because I forget or I'm in a hurry. <laughs> so I find it's not as necessary. Price difference, the HTV Ron Auto Tumblr Press is just under $200. The PYD Tumblr Press is $160, $160. And the PYD Life Mini Sublimation Oven is $200 or just under $200. So that's the price difference. Okay, so not, not, they're pretty close together. So this is what it looks like from the side. And here are the buttons, at the top. And that's kind of all there is to it. That's really, it's not, it's not like a very complicated thing, which actually is really good. I love this. I love not complicated. I truly do. By the way, here is our chat. You can see what I see every day. <laughs> all right. So that's what that looks like. And if we need another look, we can certainly look at it again with that. Okay. So I have prepared some things. I have a ceramic tumbler. This is a Cricut 15 ounce tumbler. You could do the 12 ounce ones too. So we're going to test it on that. I've already prepared a design. I have a 20 ounce skinny tumbler here, ready to go with a design as well. And I have not prepared it yet, but I have a glass tumbler here. It's actually one of our upcoming projects. Uh, so we'll, we'll wrap that one together and go ahead and do it. Okay. All right, so what do I do? Let's check the manual. <laughs> All right, step one, power on the machine. Okay, so it is powered on the power button, I plugged it in, it turned on automatically. So it's powered on, I think, or it's just sort of blinking at me. Maybe I have to actually press the button. That makes more sense, all right. So I'm gonna press the power button. Okay, it's powered on now. Now we need to set the proper time and temperature. 
uh, for my project. So the default is 210 degrees Fahrenheit in 20 seconds, which that is not enough to do a sublimation project. <laughs> so that's probably you know one of its lowest temperatures or you know not quite but all right so we need to get it to the right temperature note the warning sign up here um, also I can tell that this is getting hot here so what you would not want to do is reach in here and like pull it and grab it to try to move it around so while this doesn't feel hot this plastic this is probably the plastic the same kind of plastic that the Cricut mug press has where it's cool to the touch which I approve of uh, this is the heat plate and it's it's going to be hot so be cautious when you're moving it okay all right so our control panel here I see a thermometer button so let's start with that okay I tapped it once and it's now blinking so if I tap and hold Okay, so I have to press it to move it up. So I want to get to 380 degrees Fahrenheit. Not quite as smooth as crickets. With crickets, you can hold it and it'll go up like at five second increments. But you know, not that big of a deal either. All right, then we probably press the temperature button again to set it. Yeah, so it's, it's 210. So presumably it's going to heat up to 380 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, and then for seconds, for time, I'm gonna check our sublimation cookbook to see how long we say we should be doing it in here. No, I have not tested it on these this yet. It's brand new, but we're gonna, and let's start with our tumbler. So sublimation cookbook, awesome. Like I said earlier, uh, did I say that earlier? I write everything down so I don't have to remember it. And this is a ex perfect example of that. All right, so sublimation, or so stainless steel, our tumbler is sta stainless steel. So around page 31 is where we'll find all of the settings. Oh, I actually have it marked. Well, what do you know? All right, this is a straight sided tumbler. And it says in a tumbler press to do it 360, but I'm going to follow um, the auto tumbler press's suggestion of 380. And then it says 100 seconds. Okay, so let's just double check and see if that is what HGV Rot suggests. And there is something here in the guide. Really tiny type. Okay, so it says for stainless steel tumblers, we want 120 to 240 seconds. That's a huge range. <laughs> and 370 to 390 degrees Fahrenheit. All right. That's a huge range. So 380 is right. Let's do it for, I put 100 seconds in my cookbook and they said 120 to 240. So let's do 120 seconds. Now remember these times and temperatures always change a little bit based on your your press and your material and what you're doing, but this is an educated guess. So we're gonna tap on this and I'm gonna bring it up to 120, uh, 120 seconds. Okay, and then tap on that again. All right, so we're heating it up to 380 degrees Fahrenheit and 120 seconds. All right, let's see if it says anything else. Okay, so We've got, we powered it on, we pressed the power key to turn it on. We set the proper temperature and time to preheat the machine. The start key is red during the preheating process. Um, this is the start key and it is red, so that's good. Once the start key turns green, insert the tumbler in the center of the heating area and then press the start key and heat press the tumbler. I also note that there's a memory mode. The set temperature and time will be remembered for the next operation. That's awesome. An auto turn off. It'll turn off if there's no operation in 15 seconds. And an emergency stop. Press any button when the heating area is uh, closed and the heating area will reset and open. Okay, so if you have to do an emergency stop, you can press any button up here and it will stop. I'm going to get out my gloves so I don't accidentally touch anything that I shouldn't. Right over here. 
Always use safety. We're going to sublimate, so you want to open a window or turn on a fan. Don't forget about that. And then here is my prepared tumbler. I have taped it following our tutorial at jennifermaker.com slash sublimation tumbler. So if you're unfamiliar with how to do a tumbler, check out that tutorial. And I'm also going to make sure I do all the other things, which is specifically, I'm going to use my scraper tool to make sure that the, the seam is really pressed down well. That's important. The tape makes a huge difference in whether you are going to have a, you know, steam releasing during your process or anything like that. All right, so I've done that. I've taped the top and the bottom. Now I just need to wrap it in butcher paper. So we're using a tumbler press, so we don't have to use anything like shrink wrap or silicone sleeves, just butcher paper around it. And the butcher paper is really just to protect our press from any blowout of the sublimation ink. If you are unfamiliar with sublimation, if you're learning about this for the first time, I'll actually I'll do it over here so you can see what I'm doing. Um, go to jennifermaker.com slash sublimation for beginners. You'll learn all about it, how it works, everything. All right, so I'm just wrapping it in butcher paper. And again, this is just to protect your press. Uh, we don't need it for any other reason. All right, and then I've got some tape, my handy little tape dispenser. So I'm just gonna tape this up. So I've just put some tape around it just to keep it in place. All right, here we go. Now, let's see, what else is there is interesting about this? So normally when I use a tumbler press, I have to put a tumbler or a mug or something in it while it preheats. It did not say I had to do that. So like with the PYD Life Tumbler Press, there needs to be a tumbler or something in it. I think it, for some reason, it makes a difference in how the, the, the heat is heated up um, and its temperature and what it gets to. So I did not have to do that this time. So that's cool. We're at 380. It doesn't, also doesn't say anything about rotating it at all. I didn't see anything about that. Uh, so I'm assuming we don't have to do that. <laughs> I guess we will find out after we play test it and discover what it does, right? All right. Does anyone have any questions or warnings for me before I begin? Since this is my first time using this and you might have more experience than me. I am checking our, um, oh, I see a question about where did I get my tape dispenser? On Amazon, of course. <laughs> That's where I get all my stuff. I got this on Amazon. You can find it one of my shopping lists. I don't remember which one. But I, I you just look for a sublimation tape dispenser. It's really cool because it actually auto cuts the tape for you. See? Into these nice little pieces. I think that's super cool. All right. So, yep, that's my uh, tape. My bubble is frozen. Thank you, Janice, for letting me know. We will work on that. Can you reset my face forward screen, Greg? Thank you. We'll just put that away while we're working on that. Greg is gonna work on that. All right, I saw a question that said, I'm confused as to when you use sleeves and when you use butcher paper. Um, you would use, you always use butcher paper. So that's, if that helps you, you just always use that. You wanna use sublimation sleeves. Let's see if that worked. Uh, at work. Thank you, Greg. You would use sublimation sleeves when you're putting it into a sublimation oven or a air fryer. My recommendation is to follow a tutorial if you're unsure. Re reference the sublimation cookbook. We always say in there whether you do or not. So if that helps you. I know it's like you do for this, you do for that, and I know it can be confusing. Or, you know, once you know, make notes for yourself as well, too. Uh, Yes, Greg to the rescue. Greg is awesome. I couldn't do this without him. All right. Any um, so any of anything else that I I have I wasn't told that I should turn it, but I guess when we do this and we notice that it's you know if it doesn't close all the way, if this doesn't close all the way, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to turn it. I guess. I guess we'll find out. 
that's part of playtesting, right? And whenever I do a playtest, I try really hard to like not, like I don't watch other people's tutorials in advance. I really try to experience what it would be like from what they give us in the box and, you know, what we, what it says on a page, you know, like the product page, for example, that kind of thing. So that, because that's what I think that most of you experience too, right? All right, well, let's find out. So um, I'm going to put on my gloves. And we have preheated our tumbler press to 380 degrees Fahrenheit which is the HTV Ron's suggested, suggest, suggestion, and I've put in 120 seconds. Now, if I check my cookbook, let's actually see what the cookbook says about, um, because this is tried and true. I'm gonna go check that again. And of course, I've lost my page, but it's right around here, there we go. All right, so um, in our cookbook, we uh, tell you exactly how to wrap everything. So we've done that. We've done all the wrapping. I mean, normally we would have to turn it. So let's just find out. All right, so let's see if it fits first, okay? All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna slide it in on the side here. Tuck, I'm gonna tuck this paper in here because it's clearly gonna get in our way. All right. So I'm sliding it in, all right? I'm making a note of where I'm putting it in. The seam is right here at the top, okay? So I almost wanna like just do it and see what happens without rotating it because it didn't tell me to. All right, so I'm gonna press start. Let's see what happens. <laughs> wow. Well, uh, I don't think I have to rotate it. Like that is, okay, it's not completely closed. Let me show you what that looks like from the side here. There we go. So it's not completely closed. There's a tiny little bit there, but I have to wonder if it's gonna make that much of a difference. It's gonna heat it up, right? So. I don't know. <laughs> we're, I think I'm not going to rotate it though. I think we're just going to find out. I'll lower this camera so we can, I can let it sit right there so we can watch it. All right. So as you see on the overhead, it's counting down. It's at 72, 70 seconds. I didn't set the pressure. It determined the pressure for me. That's the auto part of this. I did determine the temperature and the time. So that is different than the Cricut Mug Press. With the Cricut Mug Press, you just put the mug in and it determines the, te the temperature and the time for you. So just that, that, so it's not as auto as the Mug Press. Just like the HDB Ron Auto Press is not as auto as the Cricut Auto Press. They are not the same thing at all, <laughs> in my opinion. All right, and how we're looking from the side, it looks the same. I guess we're going to find out. We are doing this together. <laughs> Lee says the weight is killing me. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah. So Brenda says I would try it without rotating first. So we're going to see how this works. And because I feel like it's closed really well, actually. All right, we're at 10 seconds. Uh, Terry says what size tumblers can it do? Uh, I don't have all the tumblers here to try out. It says it can go up to 30 ounces though. Now in that case, you might have to rotate, right? Okay, so I see steam releasing, uh, but we should still take it out. And I'm gonna push it out here, grab it from this end, and I'm gonna set it on our cooling rack right here. And we're gonna let that cool down, okay? Um, I also want to note that I it's gonna we're gonna try a mug, so we might as well just try that now, right? Let's go ahead and wrap this with butcher paper too. Again, the butcher paper, we just do this because it protects our heat press. We don't wanna get blowout of our ink in inside of our press, right? Because if we do, that will just transfer to other projects. So I am just gonna wrap it around like this. I'll tape it in the center, maybe a fold down one corner, one edge.
and then tape it. All right, so here it is. Get some tape here. It just needs to protect. Like, like that's not a very good wrap job, is it? <laughs> let's, just, let's put that in there. And now this one is not a seamless mug. It's just because I can't get under the handle, right? That's important. If you ever want to sublimate under your handle, I have a tutorial on how to do that. And you'd want to use a convection oven or an air fryer to do that. Um, but a lot of times we just don't need to do that. It's also a little tricky. You have to get it just so to do. All right. So for a mug, let's check the mug's temperature and time in the sublimation cookbook to see what we're recommending for a ceramic mug. All right. Ceramic is page 37. Here we go. Okay. So this is a mug with a handle. We say 400 degrees Fahrenheit and for 270 seconds. Okay. So if I check uh, HTV Ront's user manual, what they say is a ceramic tumbler, which is going to be close to a mug, right? Um, 300 to 360 to 480 seconds. And the temperature range is 380 to 400. So let's increase this to 400. Let's go ahead and do that. All right, I'm going to take, press on temperature and holding it down doesn't, there we go, holding it down maybe changes it, does not. You have to press it to change. It's not changing now. All right, let's press that again. <laughs> it's not going above 390 degrees Fahrenheit. It's just beeping at me, in fact. Uh, so I thought the temperature range was 410 degrees Fahrenheit. It appears to be 390, or I'm not operating it correctly, which could certainly be the case. But I am pressing on temperature. Can I lower it from this? I can. Can I raise it? And I cannot. So my tumbler press is not going above 390. So that's important to know. So hopefully 390 is going to be good enough for our mug. Okay. And then for time, uh, they had said... 360 to 480 seconds. And in my cookbook, I said, uh, I've already lost the page, sorry. I'll go back and check ceramic. Page 37. I said 270 seconds in a tumbler press. So 270. They said at least 360. So we're going to change our time to 360. So you have to press the buttons. You can't just hold it like I can on the Cricut Mug Press or uh, the Easy Press. Okay. All right. 390 degrees Fahrenheit, which is our maximum, and 360 seconds. All right. So let's I think it's warmed up actually. It's green. The light is green. It said it would turn green when it's warmed up. So here is our mug with the butcher paper wrapped around it. The sublimation design is um, hopefully in the right direction. <laughs> I did them really quickly right before this. I think, I think that you should always check, but I'm not going to take out the butcher paper to check. All right. So we should be able to slip it inside here. Oh, this does not fit. This, mu this uh, mug is too big to fit inside here. This is a 15 ounce Cricut mug and it will not fit. I'm checking to make sure like maybe I'm just like, nope, it definitely won't fit. So we're going to have to switch to a different, so it will not fit a 15 ounce mug. It's going to have to be a 12 ounce mug. Greg, can I get your help to find a Cricut 12 ounce mugs? We had a whole, remember those are the ones that we came here late at night one time to find <laughs> last week. All right, so we'll have to, we'll have to wait on that. <laughs> and we'll have to wrap it together again. 
Amy says that's an issue. Yeah, so it is sad. I thought it would fit. Um, but you know, it, there is a circumference. Let's check the circumference of this mug. Let's see what this mug it currently is. Let's take all this off. I'll have to reuse my design too, because I don't want, you all don't want to wait for me to print a new one. Okay, so I'm going to find my measuring tape, which might be easier said than done. I was using it earlier, but You got one for me? Thank you. I also need um, a soft measuring tape. I've lost mine. I think that earned that drawer over there. Thank you. All right. We got some 12 ounce Cricut mugs. So they do call it a tumbler press, not a mug press. So there is that. Thank you. All right. So here is our mug. Let's set it up here. And they said 2.95 to 3.35 inches in diameter is what would fit in here. I just assumed a 15 ounce would fit. So that's my fault. I just figured it fits in the Cricut mug press. It should fit in this, right? Oh, wait, a diameter, not circumference. Diameter, Jennifer. Okay. The diameter of this is three, it's over three and a half inches. So yes, this a 15 ounce mug won't fit in the HTV Ront Auto Tumbler Press. Okay, it's fine. It's not all is lost because I have some 12 ounce uh, mugs right here. So here is a mug and I will just cut off the design that I taped onto this one so we can reuse it. I don't want to cut too hard though, because you can cut into your sublimation coating. We wouldn't want to do that. I can totally use this mug for something else. All right. I have a lot of tape on this. <laughs> this is probably going to be much, much too big and we're going to have to trim it anyways. It's awesome though that we're play testing things like this, because this is how we learn about that. If we just watch their video, right? They're, they're going to gloss over stuff like this. Of course they would. Why wouldn't they? They want you to buy their product. There's nothing wrong with that. They're not going to point out the drawbacks of something. But, you know, when we do it, we can find all the pros and cons ourselves. I'm, I'm cheating and just cutting it off. All right. This is our design, by the way. Isn't it cute? I made it this morning. It's a, it's supposed to be like carved ivory and it's a cute little bunny in the snow. Okay. So I haven't cleaned it. I should clean the mug with my lint roller, which I don't have. Sorry, everybody. I thought I, I had that. I'm looking for my lint roller. Forgive me. Hey, Greg, can you help me find our lint roller? Oh, I see it right there on the table. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you all for bearing with me while we figure this out. <laughs> Joe asks if it only does tumblers. No, it's supposed to do other things like mugs and glass cans. We're going to try that one next. Thank you. All right. So we always clean our surfaces before we uh, put our design on there, just in case there's any dust or lint because dust and lint will leave little blue specks on your design. You don't want that. All right, let's see how close we can get. Oh, well, is this the, this is the 12 ounce. It says right there, 12 ounce. Okay, it's not really that different. Okay, so now I'm doubting that this is gonna fit at all. We're gonna put this in right now. I wanna make sure it's gonna fit. Okay, this one will fit. It feels a little snug though. Okay, so, but in fact, it's a lot snug, actually. I don't know, I don't know, like just barely. And it's gonna, it's gonna like pull on the butcher paper and the paper. Let's see if we can do it, okay? <laughs> so it's pretty snug, it's, it really is pretty snug. Okay, so let's wrap our design around. 
and this is warm. I probably should just wait. Oh, it's not that bad. Ceramic does take longer. Okay. So I'm going to set it up like this and then wrap it here so it's straight. And we need to get the it straight around the handle too. There we go. Okay. That's straight and straight around the handle. Okay. Let me tape it. And you know, again, this is just straight. I'm not attempting to do a seamless because it wouldn't work anyways because you can't get under the handle. All right. And then the other side, always make sure it's really snug though, right? We need that to be nice and tight so that uh, there's no air bubbles when we're sublimating or anything like that. That would be bad. Okay. So we got our tape on and now we need to get a piece of butcher paper. Pull the edge in a little bit this time and then wrap it around and tape it. I got pretty close, not quite as close, but pretty close. All right, and I'm worried about even being able to get this in there. I guess we're gonna find out. Let's tuck it all in here. But I mean, it's thicker now because it's got this paper, right? And I don't know. <laughs> all right, uh, let's, I'm gonna put my gloves on. I don't wanna touch anything by accident. We'll see if we can get this in here or not. Okay, I think it's gonna fit. I'm gonna kind of push it in from the end. All right, so this is the 12 ounce mug. All right, it's in. Let's, I don't know, I don't know. Let's, let's go ahead and press the start button and see what happens. <laughs> I guess I shouldn't have moved the handle all the way to the side. Let's see if it works anyways. All right, so it's doing its thing. All right, uh, I see people sharing the sizes, right? So um, 2.9 inches in diameter to 3.35 inches. That 15 ounce mug that we tried before that didn't fit, this was over three and a half inches in diameter. So it makes sense that it wouldn't fit. But just keep that in mind, a 15 ounce tumbler or mug will not fit in here. Eleanor says, I would have to have two cups of coffee with a smaller mug. <laughs> I know, right? I also love big mugs because I love coffee. <laughs> uh, Fran says, what is the diameter of the 12 ounce mug? Well, we can check that right now. Because two mugs come to this box of Cricut mugs. Okay, so then this is a Cricut mug, so that matters. And here's my... So this is cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and press that here. All right, this is 3.35. So this is the maximum that would fit in here. So maximum 3.35 inches in diameter, just barely fit into the press. And let me show you what it looks like from the side so you can see that. In case that's useful. There it is, sitting in there. Move this back a little bit so you can see. So this is the 15 ounce that did not fit, right? You can see here. And then what we have in there is the 12 ounce, which did fit, but just barely, just barely. Uh, Yvonne says, should you put butcher paper around your Cricut mug press as well? Yep, you want to use butcher paper for that as well. Yep, we just generally use butcher paper to protect our, our presses. That's the idea, yes. Uh, maybe even smaller wood, smaller mugs would work better, maybe, like a 10-ounce. Do they make 10-ounce mugs? I know they make 11-ounce mugs, but that's a really small mug. <laughs> uh, like, I really do like a bigger mug. <laughs> like, it's just works better for what we're putting into it, right? Uh, okay. Do any of your books have Celsius degree to Fahrenheit degree conversion? Our books have both temperatures. Of course, I wouldn't like leave everybody out who's not in the US or 
Where else? Do, where, who else uses Fahrenheit? Where's my book? I'm missing placing all of my things. Oh, here it is. Uh, yes, yeah, so I'll show you while we're waiting for this. So you can see that we've got the Fahrenheit and Celsius temperature in there for all, all of our temperatures have both of them in there. I'm not as good at doing met or you know, like metric um, with sizes. I still tend to talk in inches um, unless whatever we're doing really is usually measured in millimeters or something like that or centimeters. I, I don't usually convert that very well. I will admit I'm not as good at that, but I try really hard to convert Fahrenheit and Celsius. So um, we set this to 390 degrees Fahrenheit. So let me convert that for you right now. Now this can change, of course, between Fahrenheit and Celsius, but I'll tell you what I'm using if that's helpful, 198 degrees Celsius is what this is set to. Of course, I don't know how to switch it to Celsius, but <laughs> I, I have no doubt that it can. Let's check and see. Let's be sure before I tell you that you can do it because I can't imagine any, um, my lint roller was stuck to my manual. I'm sure that there is a way to change it between Fahrenheit and Celsius. But it doesn't say in the manual how to do it. Does anybody know in the chat how to change these? Let me know if you do. Let's see. Uh, I see everyone talking about metric and inches. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, I, I'm just not as good. I try though. I know that more people use Celsius than Fahrenheit. So I really try. Uh, Jennifer Maker's audience is worldwide. So I try really hard to share that. If someone could look up whether the, this auto press can be switched to Celsius, I would love to know. Because I don't see anything about it here in... I don't, there must be a way. I mean, this is made in China. HTV Ron's products are made in China. So I can't imagine that there isn't a way to switch this to display Celsius if we need to. You know, like maybe we have to hold down some keys or something to do it, you know, that kind of thing. Press and hold the temp button for three seconds. Okay. Greg looked it up. Thank you, Greg. To change to change from Fahrenheit to Celsius and dis the display on the HDV Auto Tumblr Press, you press and hold on the temperature key for three seconds, and that will switch back and forth between the two. Thanks, Greg. I appreciate that. Oh, okay. It's ready. So put on my glove. Remember to always put on your gloves before you touch this. The handle shouldn't be hot, but you don't want to accidentally breath. Um, brush anything anyways, right? All right, so pull that out. This is normal. Do not be alarmed. Uh, this is just your butcher paper. All right, so we set this over here on our cooling rack. All right, so and I'll show you the results when we're done. All right, so the next thing I want to do is a glass can. Let me show you what that looks like because it says it can do these two. Of course, we'll have to check and make sure that the size is right. But this is a glass can. Some people will call these tumblers too. All right, so this one is frosted. We'll have to take off this little cap here. Um, they, they come in clear and they come in frosted. Let's see if it fits. I'll switch over to my other one. And yes, this fits without a problem. So. Excellent. All right, so we just need to get a design onto this and then we can test it. All right, so for this one, I have a pre-printed design and it's actually from an upcoming tutorial. So I decided to do it with you and it is flowers and bees, so super cute. So I need to just trim it. I'm gonna set these things out of my way so you can see what I'm doing. This is cool, it's not hot, it's always nice. 
there's our glass can now this this project is coming on our blog in just a few days as part of Mary Maker Mingo we're teaching you how to sublimate on these so I guess this is a little preview <laughs> all right and this is not seamless so we don't have to be stressed about uh, you know getting them just right so but we're gonna trim it off let's see if it fits like this nope still too long a uh, seamless tumbler or seamless designs are definitely what you should do when you're new to sublimation right so don't try to do the hard stuff a seamless did I just say seamless is what you should do when you're new no you should not do seamless when you're new it's just a, it's a lot harder do one like this this is a great beginner project you don't have to worry about getting your seams to match you'll be much happier in the end all right so see super cute let's make sure there's no dust or lint you can do this or you can use alcohol just want to make sure there's nothing on here okay and then we're going to wrap it around like this make sure it's straight i usually use the table um in the bottom of the table and but like the i want to note that the bottom edge of this is curved so i think i'm going to bring it up and not use the table not have it be like flush but instead bring it up on the tumbler so that it is going to have a nice straight edge and not get all cloudy on me that's the goal at least so more like that see we'll see all right that looks good so let's tape it of course always get nice and tight there you don't want it to be loose if it's loose uh, you could have issues because it'll, it'll have like little bubbles will form in there and then it'll get cloudy and blurry all right and I'm just gonna do it like this okay so we'll see how it works like this and let's wrap it in butcher paper to protect it. The tutorial in a few days will go into much more depth about getting it to the right size and, and all that. Um, and we don't even use a press for that one. We're gonna use an oven. So this is, a little, this is different so that you are not confused by that. But it, I wanted to test the glass because this, this press claims it does it. So I thought it'd be cool. All right, and then a little bit more tape and just in this butcher paper again is just to protect our press. Okay, so this is ready to go. Let's check the manual to see what temperatures it recommends. So a glass tumbler, you can see that down at the bottom and it says, get that up close for you, 240 to 360 seconds. So maybe we'll just say 300. <laughs> <laughs> something in the middle because that's quite a range isn't it and 360 to 380 degrees Fahrenheit so we'll say 370 all right now the manufacturer surely has a recommendation but this is a different press too let's move this over all right so let's do 370 degrees Fahrenheit and uh, I've already forgotten time sorry <laughs> 300 300 seconds which may or may not be right you know we're just trying it out this is halfway in the middle between what they recommend all right so we'll let this get to the right oh it looks like it's good it's green right now okay so let's put on our heat resistant gloves so we stay safe the glove okay so this is our glass so normally I do not recommend using glass in the Cricut mug press uh, I have seen anecdotally that it can cause issues with the mug press right now I know I did it in my play test in the beginning not knowing I it could cause issues and I never had an issue but I have heard of others having issues using glass, 
So just so you know. But this says it can do it. For all I know, this will have issues too. I don't know. We, we would have to do play test a whole lot more. But let's put in our glass. Let's tuck in our butcher paper here. We don't need to have all that sticking out. All right. So there's our glass. Now let me switch to the other view so you can watch it. There's the side. We put in our glass right here like this. Okay, so it's about halfway in the middle, I'd say. Yep, that looks good. Okay, 370 degrees Fahrenheit, 300 seconds, and start. And that's what it looks like on the side. All right. <laughs> Diana says, does the glass have a sublimation coating? Yes. All, everything we're trying here is a sublimation product. Uh, it is. Um, this will be in our tutorial, exactly what we used. We got them on Amazon, of course. Here's the box. That doesn't really help you. Um, it comes in a bigger box, and these are sublimation coated glass, glass cans. They call them like beer cans or tumblers or glass cups, but they have these bamboo lids on them. You see right here? You can put a straw in there. So the, everything. The mug is a sublimation mug. The tumbler is a sublimation mug. The glass is a sublimation mug. We always use sublimation or, or you know, a sublimation product to do sublimation projects or we're recoding them in some way so that, you know, there's many tutorials on how to do that. We're not doing any of that today. We're, we're playing this very straight, uh, ready to go, tumblers, mugs, and glasses. Uh, okay, so some link is not working. What link's not working? Figure that out. Is my link not working at the bottom of the screen? Oh, I didn't even put that back up there. Let's do that. This, this with my jennifermaker.com slash auto tumbler press is working, right? I'm going to check it right now. I think I checked it earlier, but you know, it's December 20th. <laughs> We're getting down to the wire. Okay, good. It's working. <laughs> you just never know. <laughs> All right, questions. Uh, Shelly says, is this heat resistant for tumblers or just mugs? Uh, we actually have, oh, it's kind of hot still. We have done, I'll show it to you though, a ceramic tumbler. See, it's cooling off right now. Don't worry about the little burn stuff that's normal. It's just butcher paper. We've done a stainless steel tumbler, also still cooling off. And inside right now, we have a glass cup or glass can, whatever you want to call that. So this tumbler, this tumbler press is supposed to be able to do stainless steel, glass, and ceramic. Diana says sublimating on glass straws would be awesome. I agree. Can we do that? Do they make them? That would be super cool. I would, I would love, we just did pens. It would be, I think it would be really similar to doing pens, like super similar. Uh, Polly says, if you are using a sublimation product to add to a mug, do you need to cover the whole mug or only where the print will go? Um, I have not ever tried putting, when you say sublimation product, do you mean like something that you brush on? I have never even tried that because it's just so easy to get sublimation mugs. They're not expensive and they're always going to look better than anything I could do. So I haven't even tried it. But yes, if you were, you would probably want to put it where you're going to put your design. Just keep in mind, it can those things that you put on there can yellow. And so if you don't put it on the whole thing, you could have just like, like a yellow spot where your design is. So, you know, I guess it's up to you though. Teresa says, can we get the image you used on the metal tumbler on your site? I only made it this morning, <laughs> like literally an hour before our party. It's made with an AI art generator. And then I like, you know, fussed with it in Photoshop to make it like perfect. If you want, like after you see them, if you want them, like I don't know if it's going to look any good or not. It's I'm literally playing right now. Um, if you like it, I'm happy to share it. Of course, I love sharing my things. Uh, Ken says, I've seen people put them in water after they were finished in the press. I have never done that. I actually didn't even know that was a thing until maybe a week ago when I saw someone talking about it in our awesome sublimation group. And I did a little research into, you know, why someone was dunking it in water. And my understanding is that it was an, an older practice, something, because sublimation in 
has been around for a long time. I mean, I'm a pretty recent newcomer to it for the like, last two years, I'd say. Um, so I think what I understand is that back in the day, they used to recommend this. And so some people still do it. I've never done it. My projects have turned out great. So you are welcome to try it if you want to. I'm sure there's tutorials on you know, how to do it and what temperature your water should be. But I have not tried it. Um, and I have not needed to do it. So that is, that's the honest truth <laughs> about that. Uh, for all I know, it does a great job. I just don't know. It just hasn't, it's never come up. Oh, it's ready. Okay, you can see the steam coming out here. Remember to have a fan on, a window open when you're doing sublimation. All right, so put on my glove and let's take this out. You would want to take it out right away because you know that platen is still hot and you don't want uh, to keep sublimating, right? You want it to stop, right? And we're setting it over here on our cooling rack, right? Which you can see right here. All right, so uh, this the press will turn off after 15 minutes of inactivity. I'm not planning to use it again, so I'm going to go ahead and turn it off now by pressing the power button. So it's off, it's blinking. This blinking, from what I can tell, means it's plugged in, right? So I also normally unplug my presses. I don't keep my presses plugged in. I think that they just, it's, I don't know. I think it's a safety thing. I just worry about it. It's, it's heat, just like it with an iron. So I've unplugged it. You can do what you want, but I don't see any reason to keep it plugged in. Unlike, let's say, a printer, which you should keep your printer plugged in. Okay, so. Let's, oops, I just let my little glass, hopefully I didn't crack it or anything. It just kind of rolled off there. In fact, let's change that a little bit. So it's, there we go, okay. I'm gonna move this over and maybe we'll back out the camera a little bit here. So we've got more space to work. All right, so there is the HTV Runt Auto Tumbler Press and here, are our cooling projects. The three projects that we did. And I think that we can start unwrapping. Are you excited to see the results? Because <laughs> I am. All right, um, we're gonna go in the order that we did them. So I did the stainless steel tumbler first. This is a 20 ounce skinny tumbler. And then I did the 12 ounce ceramic mug second. The 15 ounce did not fit inside the HTV Ron Auto Tumbler Press. And then we'll do the glass can second. All right. And this is definitely cooled. And the purpose of the water, my understanding is that it will help it cool down faster. I don't know. I don't know if it's necessary or not. All right. So let's get all this off. I take a little while. Maybe I'll just switch to the, this camera and answer questions while I'm doing that. Uh, does anyone have any questions for me so far while I'm working on this? <laughs> I know it'd be nice if I had like a little reveal. I can try to get all of the, the tape off and reveal it, but I don't know if that's gonna happen. I taped it pretty good. It certainly worked, I can tell it worked already though. I'm gonna just do this. How long does it take for them to cool? Um, it depends, ceramic cool is slower than uh, the, like the metal does, right? So, but how long have we been doing this? This was like 15 minutes ago. It feels completely cool right now. I'm putting it onto the rack like this this rack that you can see here. I think it helps because there's more air circulation. Hey Greg, maybe you just help me so I don't sit over myself. I'm not awkwardly unwrapping this on camera. Will you help me unwrap this? Because it's hard, uh, this is definitely one of those things that's hard to multitask and talk of at the same time. I'm gonna pass that to you. Thank you, I appreciate it. All right, let's see how the mug is doing. The mug is definitely still warm but it's, now, it's no longer sublimating. It will have cooled down enough. That's what matters, and of course, and then you, know, you don't want it to burn your hands. 
It's not so hot that it's going to burn my hands, though. All right, this one will be easier to get off. Okay. Hmm, okay. <laughs> I'll show you in a minute. And then this one, as long as I can touch it, it's still really warm. I could probably use my gloves. I mean, basically, the general rule is that when you stop, uh, when you stop sublimating, you want to wait at least 15 seconds for the sublimation process to uh, stop, right? So the sublimation process is literally going from a solid to a gas and then back to a solid. So you want it to go back to a solid before you mess with it because otherwise it can cause blurring. Um, this has been out for at least 15 seconds, so as long as I can touch it with my gloves, it will be okay to unwrap. I'm making quite a mess over here. Okay, so this one. And I don't remember the times we used anymore. Does anyone remember the times we used? Uh, so that we can recap. If anyone remembers, let me know in the chat and then I'll do a recap because there will be people who just joined us. Thank you. Okay, so I'll set that there. Can you get this one off? Is it too hot for you to handle without gloves? Thank you. Okay. So I already see results, good and bad. <laughs> now, of course, just because, uh, you know, like we guessed at the temperatures because normally I would test it and I would find the right temperatures and then I would, you know, tell you what they are. But we did this together, so I don't have that luxury. Thank you. Okay. So let me show you on the overhead each one of these things. Put these over here. Okay, so first we have the tumbler, which looks like this. What do y'all think? So I see some things right away. Um, I feel like, I feel like it did a pretty good job. This feels like my, I can show you the original, okay? Again, it's supposed to be like carved ivory. I put a little band in the back here, walking in a winter wonderland, Maker Farm, December 2023, because the deer reminded me of our farm. Now I do see, um, I think the top looks pretty good, except look right here. This is definitely, even though I taped everywhere, um, I definitely see some issues right here. And then at the bottom, um, it's not bad, but it's also not as good. Like, so in those tiny, like maybe if I had taped it more, but like even between the tiny little bits, like the seams of the tape, it looks like we have some, so it's not quite going to the edge. Do you see what I'm talking about? So those of you who do tumblers will know what I mean. Like here, it's a little bit lighter. Here, it's a little lighter. And I think that's literally where two pieces of tape were just barely touching, but not perhaps overlapping, maybe, I'm guessing. So, but how many of us are looking at that? Like if you just look at it like this, like, you know, so... Maybe with more tape, like I see right here. See that little bit right there? So I see some issues at the edges. And I don't feel like I would have had this issue in my oven or my um, tumbler press normally. Like, I don't normally have these issues. I'm pretty good about taping. That doesn't mean I did a... It could totally still be user error, right? So this is... Uh, do you guys like this design? <laughs> this is done in an AI art generator. All right, so... But otherwise, I feel like it did, it's pretty true to what I designed this morning, colors included. So it's supposed to be like an ivory, so it's an off-white. It is off-white. The sky was supposed to be blue. It's blue. And then there's this band at the edge to create the seam. And let's take a look at that seam. That seam looks really good. I see something going on down here. I don't know what that is. But otherwise, I'd say it's pretty good. I only see a small, a few small issues at the edges, like right here, which, you know, just, that is probably nitpicking. Okay, so I think this is pretty good. Okay, so this is our tumbler. Now this is our mug. This is the same basic idea, but if you ask me, this is overcooked. Um, it looks, 
it looks just like not quite right. And look at the inside. What a mess. <laughs> uh, I don't like the inside there at all. Now I could have fixed that by trimming it better. So that's my fault. So let's, we, we won't worry about that. But like, do you see how it's like brown? So I would say this temperature is wrong. But other than that, I guess it's okay. So this is a little bunny, but it, this should be the same color as this. You see the difference here? So I would, next time I tried this, I would lower the temperature and see if I got a better result. So obviously I need to find what, what the right temperature is for this. But otherwise, it seems okay. What do you think about this one? Look at that cute little bunny. Isn't he cute? Little winter wonderland bunny. All right, so that is the mug. And then here is the glass can. So we're going from winter to spring, that focus. Okay, so this is a frosted glass sublimation can, tumbler, whatever we call this. And it did a beautiful job. This is a more beginner friendly project. Uh, the edge here is, the edge is beveled. So and let, I would have had to get a straight um, straight edge at the bottom I would have had to have moved my design up it was just overlapping ever so slightly so that's what I would expect which I actually think is really pretty but I'm not seeing any issues what is that <laughs> is that maybe adhesive I don't know what that is does it rub off I don't know what that is that's where my seam was so I'm gonna bet it was adhesive or something uh, let's see if we can get it off with some alcohol. Greg, could you find me uh, some alcohol and a coffee filter? Thank you. We'll see if we can get it off. All right, so if you want these, this, uh, the deer design, I'll put these up here so you can see them. If you want the deer, see that one, and the bunny, I'm happy to share them. <laughs> I'm more than happy to share them. You'll have to resize them to fit your tumblers, of course, but we have, or your mugs, but we have tutorials that help you do that. So, so, well, it clearly did get to the right temperature. Uh, so it's possible that this one was too high. We had this at 390 degrees. It's probably not too high, probably too long. My sublimation cookbook said to press for shorter time, but the user manual for the press said longer, so I went with longer. Next time I do this, I would, on, the, on this press, I would try my time in the book. So here it is. All right, so what do we think? Do we, do we like this? Do we not like this? I'd love to know what you all think about this. Now try to clean up that glass can too. Thank you, I appreciate it. Just rubbing alcohol, if there's adhesive or anything on it, this will get it off. Take off my gloves. Clean up my area. Uh, Gwendolyn says, great design, well done. I, um, I agree, this, this is way more user friendly than like the manual tumbler presses for sure. Those are, they're neither attractive nor, and like they don't do auto pressure, right? I don't see any pressure issues with any of these for what it's worth. So that's good. Um, all right, let's see if I can clean that up on the side here. I'll show you what I'm doing in fact. So I noticed a little adhesive at the edge here. So I'm just wiping it down with some alcohol. Note that alcohol won't take off your sublimation or anything. And that did it. So it was just a little adhesive residue from the press. So no big deal. Um, all right. I see, <laughs> I see lots of comments. Sonia says, not impressed with the mug press. Do you mean pressing of the mugs in this or do you mean the Cricut mug press? Uh, Kathy says, I think it's more versatile. Uh, Gina says they look nice, but for the price, I would expect better results. Um, Marlene says, I see your glass was frosted. Can you sublimate on a clear glass? You can, so long as it's a sublimation glass. So this is what a clear glass looks like. This tutorial is coming up 
uh, on our blog in just a few days. So there's that same design, but in clear, and here it is unfrosted. See the difference? Isn't that pretty? Yep, so you can definitely do that for sure. Does the Cricut Mug Press do tumblers if we flip them and run them again, or would it burn the design? So I, I, when I was doing my very first play test, if you go back and watch that video, I did in fact find a tumbler. I thought, in fact, I have one right here. Yeah, here it is. This is, oh no, it's not it. Where is my, where's my normal sippy cup? Where's my um, metal tumbler, my mason jar? Do you know why that is? Thank you. I'll show you. I'll show you one that I did years ago when I first got my Cricut Mug Press. Uh, so uh, you can flip them, but you're not going to get the same results that you would get from a tumbler press that's applying even pressure over it. And they and also not all tumblers will fit into the mug press. The mug press has a bigger opening than the tumbler press does. So that's important. So if you're going to do more tumblers than mugs, you might want this. If you're going to do mugs, more mugs than tumblers, you'd want the Cricut mug press. Thank you. So this I made in the Cricut mug press when it first came out. This is infusible ink because I hadn't started sublimation yet. And this is a, um, a metal mason jar and I use this all the time for drinking at my desk. I love this thing. Um, but this fits. This would not fit in here. This fits in the mug press. It would not fit in the HTV Rant press. I can just tell. Like it's, it's a pretty chonky one. Uh, so you can buy some silicone sleeves to help tumblers fit into the Cricut mug press, but I have not experimented with it because I don't know, just, I have a tumbler press, so I haven't done that. So, so let's set this aside because that won't fit. We don't want to confuse anybody. Uh, Samantha says, after watching tutorials, I feel like a sublimation oven or an air fryer is the way to go because then you have options. I agree, you have options. The only thing is, just keep in mind, like if you're going to do a lot, you're going to do a variety of things, then I feel like a sublimation oven, like I have over here, is definitely more versatile. Versatile. But if you are mostly doing tumblers or the 12 ounce mugs, then something like this is faster because you don't have to shrink wrap it or, or some, you know, put bands around it or anything like that. Right? So this will be faster than this, right? But if you just want to do a bunch of things because you're just playing, then you'd want to get this. So I think if you're uh, making a whole bunch to sell or, you know, to donate or something, this is going to make you happier. Whereas if you just want to play and have fun and it's a hobby, a sublimation oven is going to make you happier. That's my general thought. I have them all, so I'm spoiled. <laughs> but I know that many times we can only get one. Okay, what other, anyone else have any other questions for me? Uh, what tumbler press do I prefer? Well, uh, I usually use the PYD Life tumbler press that I showed you earlier, the big one. Um, now that I have this one, I might try using this one for a while, but I'll have to use them both to determine which one I like the best. I really like how this one is lighter, smaller, like, I, like I'm going to want to use this one. So I would probably will just keep using this one until it doesn't work for me, right? If it doesn't work for me, then I'll go back to my other one. Mary says, can non-uniform tumblers be used? No. So just like with the Cricut Mug Press, the, anything you put into the HTV Rond Auto Tumbler Press would have to be straight sided. So you can't have any tapered tumblers. If you want to do a tapered tumbler or a tapered mug, you need to go to something like the sublimation oven or an air fryer instead. Uh, Kristen says, can shrink wrap be used instead? You would not want to use any shrink wrap with a tumbler press. No, don't use that. Uh, can you do 30 ounce tumbler? T Tammy says, can you do 30 ounce tumblers? You're supposed to be able to. I don't have one to show you though. And I feel like it would be a pretty tight fit. So, but they claim that you can. So you're supposed to be able to. So we'll say yes, but I haven't been able to try it myself. Um, any other questions for me? Uh, let's see here. So no tapered blanks. 
uh, correct? So we have a tutorial on how to do tapered tumblers if you want to learn how to do those. That's over on my blog at jennifermaker.com. I, DS says, I wish Cricut would make one too. I do too. Every time like they're going to say, hey, we have something coming, I'm always hoping it's a Cricut tumbler press. That's why I was excited about this because, well, if Cricut didn't make one, at least these people did, right? So I would prefer that Cricut made one personally. I really like their products. I think that they're awesome, but they don't have one. So we're reviewing this one instead. But maybe they'll, maybe they'll make one. Debbie says, is your PYD Life Tumblr Press the Pro Max? I don't think so. I think I just got the cheapest one. <laughs> I think they come, I think there's actually a variety of them, but I think that mine is pretty basic. All right. Uh, I think that I've answered all the questions that I see. Can you do pens and ovens instead of air fryer? Yes, we have a tutorial. We just came out with a tutorial on sublimation pens. You can do them in convection ovens and in air fryers. Check it out. It's on my blog, jennifermaker.com. All right. So here's all the things. We didn't do this one in here, but you know, we could have for sure. So here's our projects. Put that here and move this back and I'll do a little little wrap up. I have too many things here at my desk. Let's clean it up a little bit. That's pretty good. Not really my desk gets very messy. It really is. But I, tr I truly try really hard. Oh, I want to I want to note you just I just noticed something. Um this is the print for the mug. Remember I told you how it's overcooked? This totally, look, look how much of the ink was transferred off that. That, I would definitely say that's exactly what happened. This was just heated for too long, okay? So that you can see that. That's, that's, that's a lot of ink burned off. <laughs> All right, and it just, and it definitely looks like kind of yellowish. Do you see how that looks a little, I mean, it's supposed to be, it's ivory, but it's just a little bit, it's just a little bit too dark compared with this one. It's not that bad, I suppose, but just a little bit, just a little bit. <laughs> okay. So that was the HTV Rond Auto Tumbler Press. I think it did a pretty good job. I don't like that it doesn't do 15 ounce mugs and only does 12 ounce mugs. And even at the 12 ounce mug size, it was pretty tight but it did the 20 ounce skinny tumbler really easily. It also fit the glass tumbler without a problem. And it did do all of these just fine. Now, what I'm not sure about are the times. I really need more time to play with this to find the right time. And this is of course normal. It's normal to have to experiment and come up with it. Um, so what I will do is I will experiment with this, figure out the right times for a skinny tumbler, a ceramic mug and a glass. Um, can or glass tumbler or whatever we call this <laughs> and I will get the sublimation cookbook up to date with it so that we have them in there so that we know um, and I think yeah and oh if you need to get a copy of sublimation cookbook you can get that over at sublimationcookbook.com we keep this up to date all the time we just updated it with um our pens, I think it was something I can't remember right now, but we just did it a few days ago. So we're always, as we do tutorials and as we learn things, we're updating it. So if you have the digital version of this, you can just go download it again and get the latest version. If you have the print edition from Amazon, you'd have to order it again, right? Because you can't update a print edition easily like that. But just so you know, we do keep this up to date. So I will work on what the right temperature should be, and then we will share that with you for sure. And I think that's it. So if you have questions about sublimation or you get one and wanna share your review, I would love to know what you think about this. Come tell us in our sublimation group. It's at jennifermaker.com slash sublimation group. We have over 200,000 sublimation crafters in it. It is, as far as I know, the best sublimation group. <laughs> I'm totally biased when I say that, but it's really awesome because we've got beginners and experts in there. Everybody's helping each other. It's really motivating and inspirational. I love our group. I get so many ideas from our group. In fact, I'm pretty sure I got the idea to make this design 
from our group. I saw people sharing these really cool carved ivory designs and I'm like, I know I can do that in my AI art generator. Um, and I will share these designs on our blog. I don't know the design number. Um, trying to think maybe five, yeah, I don't know because we assign our design numbers in advance. I don't know what's free right now. Just search for, I'll call it um, Winter Wonderland Designs. <laughs> It's not very helpful. Uh, look for, search for my library for Winter Wonderland wraps. Maybe that's what we'll call it because they wrap around these. Um, or maybe Winter Wonderland sublimation designs, something like that. So I don't know the library number, but I will put them in there for you if you want them. And that's it. Thank you so much for joining me for this play test. I hope you found it useful. Leave your questions below this video. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you get one, if you like it, if you don't like it. It's all really helpful for me and helpful for everybody else who wants to or is considering getting one. And remember, if you want to get one, you can get one from um, this link that I have at the bottom of the screen here, jennifermaker.com slash auto tumblr press that takes you right to my amazon shopping list that has this cute blue one in it and the white ones and some bundles and things like that um, so i just gathered them up together so that you know where to find them and that's it for today until tomorrow this is jennifer maker reminding you to craft a life you love <laughs>